Today we are looking at a chess gameplay between Andrew Tate and his cousin Luke. This game is absolutely insane and at the end we see an actual brilliant move. And it was a 3 minute game played on chess.com, let's get into it. So Luke opens up with the move E4, the exact same way Emery Tate would like to open up his chess games. I did actually hear that Emery Tate did have some influence over Luke's upbringing, so E4, nice good stuff. After E4, Andrew plays E6 and after D4 and D6, we are in the pick defense. Andrew actually implemented this opening against Grandmaster Maurice Ashley. We see C4 and C6. And after Knight C3, we see Bishop E7, Knight F3, Bishop D7, and now Bishop D4. Three. And here Andrew goes knight f6, which is slightly too passive. White can really punish this move with the move e5. Good thing for Tate he doesn't do this. And one thing I've noticed about Andrew's play is that he likes to play quite passive in the opening, but as the game advances and unfolds, then he really starts to attack. So just some observations there. Uh, e5 was a killer. Instead, bishop g5 was played and now just castles kingside. And here we see bishop f6. Now, normally in chess, you do not want to exchange your bishop for a knight unless you have good reason to but here there's no really reason i mean after bishop f6 we just see a slow move bishop c2 in chess you cannot afford to play slow moves you can apply that to boxing you can apply that to football you can even apply that to ballet you never really want to move slow you've always got to move with speed intensity get it going and bishop c2 it's just a bit too slow there was a strong move here e5 now black should actually go e5 here the reason is is that it opens up this bishop it also prevents white from from playing it and Andrew would just have more central control. Instead he plays the move knight a6 which is perfectly fine and now e5 we see d5, d5 and bishop e7 and Luke tries to fire his last bullet at Tate bishop d3. Andrew stands unfazed in the threat of checkmate in one and goes g6 blocking it and after castles queen side we have castles of opposite sides. One side has gone king side, one side has gone queen side side just know this game is going to heat up full barbarian mode no defense all attack no shields are involved in this game just swords gonna get good and andrew kickstarts the attack with a plunder knight b4 which hangs a bishop it doesn't matter though because luke misses it he goes queen e4 we see knight c2 andrew takes that bishop and king c2 now since this rook is eyeing down this file it's never a good idea in chess to have your opponent's rook on the same file as your queen so we see queen c7 and it's gonna start getting extremely violent we see h4 and now andrew strikes at the heart of his opponent's flank and goes b4 Five. Bang. Luke, Andrew's cousin, doesn't care about this. He goes h5. You know, this is full Emery style. We see g5, which, you know, it's actually an interesting move. It looks counterintuitive, but sometimes the counterintuitive moves in chess are the best moves. And Luke continues up with the move h6. And now we just see it takes. And now the move queen c4 is perfectly fine. Instead, Luke tries to get all tricky and it works. It goes knight g5. A fairly strong move here. But you might be wondering, does this not just hang a knight because after bishop g5 we see queen g4 now it's not very clear how you defend this bishop because there is a pin here you can't go f6 so andrew plays the probably rather inviting move queen e5 after a little think he's come up with this move thinking he's defending it but when one thing's attacked low it leaves another thing vulnerable rook d7 luke wins back his material however andrew is still up one pawn and the position is pretty much equal andrew goes queen f5 trying to get some queens off not the best move you know you're up a pawn you'd think it's good but after takes and takes the move rook h5 is a very strong move good thing for tate his opponent misses out and he goes rook h to d1 himself and the time situation on the clock is that andrew has one minute 40 seconds and his cousin luke has one minute 49 seconds and andrew grabs his rook by the top and goes rook f to e8 we see rook c7 going after this pawn andrew defends it rook e6 but this leaves the seventh rank vulnerable and luke penetrates this move 
with rook d7. Andrew has to be careful here. Bishop h6, and now Luke wins back his pawn. If it weren't for this bishop covering this g7 square, he could be in serious trouble. Anyway, we see rook d6, and after rook h7, now rook d2 check. We see king b1, and here Andrew literally plays a brilliant move. I mean, Stockfish himself literally awarded Andrew this move. It wasn't just me tampering with the analysis. This is genuinely a brilliant move, because here he played rook e8. Now, you might just think, doesn't this just hang a bishop? Well, if this bishop is taken, this wasn't played in the game, by the way, I'm just showing you. Well, this is a forced checkmate. This knight has to block. Bang. That is game over. So just going back a bit to rook e8, you are sacrificing the bishop here with the threat of a checkmate. And after rook e8, Luke plays rook e7. We see an exchange, which actually favors Andrew here because now he gobbles up this pawn and he's up one pawn, about to be up another pawn. I mean, Andrew does have some weak pawns of himself, but he has this pass pawn and pass pawns in chess can be worth literally as much as a queen. So we see a3, we see rook g2 and rook a7. But now this pawn slides up. We see rook c7 going after this pawn, but after f3 and rook c7, here we see f2 and rook f6. Here you can try pause the video and follow find the move Andrew played here. So I'll let you pause the video and find one of the best moves. So there's a couple. The move rook g7 is extremely strong, but the most simple in my opinion, rook g1 check. And after king a8, now you promote. And after this, Luke resigned. The reason behind Luke's resignation is that he's down a full rook and Andrew should be able to convert this. If you enjoyed this video, I think you might enjoy this video. Thank you for your time and attention. Have a good day.